Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 5 of uh, The Boys Presents Diabolical. I could just call it Diabolical, but whatever. I'm very anal retentive about just saying the whole title. A lot of really interesting, interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. That was a terrible intro, but we... Go on regardless. Well, I really, you know, as the weeb that I am, I really appreciate the anime aesthetic they're going on for. Obviously, uh, our main protagonist in this episode being Sky, who's voiced by Aquafina, and the episode was also written by her, so that's pretty dope. But, um, yeah, just kind of a character misfit trying to fit in. Tries to, well, for one, why would you ever get in a car with a drug dealer? That was, but I guess it's like, right, you kind of have to go by his terms, um, who was apparently voiced by Seth Rogen, so that was interesting. But I love that the moment he saw, like, a billboard of the deep, he started freaking out. I was like, oh, my God, he's... A I'm like, once again, which is funny because the deep is such a low-tier character. Like, in the regards of, like... I mean, he, he's the asshole that he is just in the show in general, but he's he's the butt of the joke. And so for someone to really be afraid of him, it's like, yeah, he's in the seven, or rather was, because apparently this, this is kind of leaning into the continuity if he's not in the seven. Once again, it makes you wonder, like, some of these stories feel like they could, in some sense, yes, they're, like, outlandish and wild, but they also seem like they still could fit in some regards, into the continuity that is even just the show, because it's like, right, he's not in the seven, so it's like, right, this could be uh, during season probably, like, no, probably season two probably like after he's already left the church maybe so it could be like oh in between season two and three in that regard like it could it kind of fit in that but um yeah uh he ended up crashing she ended up stealing some compound v which uh her friends want well her quote-unquote friends wanted not to take it because they're like oh trying to trick us to drinking liquid meth and she's like oh was it meth i was like oh because she didn't get any superpowers and i always i've always flip flop on them like i always like how does that because I'm trying to think, I and mean, do correct me in the comments, I'm like, straight up just taking Compound V doesn't make give you superpowers. It has to be introduced as a baby, right? But I'm trying to remember, I'm like, probably not. Most cases, it's like that, but I'm like, we know that it's a drug that enhances soups abilities, but also it's the reason why people become supers, but that's usually from like a baby on. So I'm like, I'm trying to think, of like, well, to be fair, like Stormfront probably like, she stopped aging because of her powers, and so, like, I'd assume that's because she was introduced to Compound V that, like, when she was in, like, her 20s or 30s, right? So, that's what I'm like, maybe that's a very old-school notion. Once again, I'm thinking too much about it, but, yeah, she taught the Compound V and ended up creating a sentient shit, which doesn't have superpowers. I love that her thing is just, uh, Areola, uh, her thing is just spreading her legs up and kind of showing you her butthole, and it's like, oh, I love this, like, oh, it's, it's, oh, Sky's like, oh, did you hear that? It's like, I don't have ears. It's like, well, how didn't you? And she's like, what did you say? And she's just sitting there with her legs open. Once again, exposing her butthole. Um, I also love the whole bit about, like, Areola. It's like, oh, I want to go by Areola. Because she's like, oh, can, can we call you Georgia? Because that was my mom's name. And I love, anytime I hear that, it makes me think of her. It's like, okay, no, I'm going to go by Areola. Because, like, Georgia sounds like a stupid or, like, lame or boring-ass name or something. Like, she's like, yeah, 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 sure, of course. Like, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. I was like, that was supposed to be such a sweet moment that immediately got shit on. But I love that the Deep's there to kind of handle all of this. And he's like, I love later on he's criticizing this power. He's like, oh, that's the grossest thing I've ever seen. Which immediately makes me think of well in season two when homelander was like oh your gills are showing cover that up they're disgusting and, and i think that plays into the fact is that because of his circumstances he was bullied and treated different because of those gills and stuff so it is interesting for him to call out someone else's shitty situation considering his situation is gross to others but it's also it plays into him feeling the need to look down on other people because he himself is looked down it's like right a bully will typically bully because they themselves were bullied so i think that there's a there's a cycle to that and i love poor sky getting areola taken from her and it's like oh like here's some money he's like oh my god a hundred thousand dollars uh no that reads a thousand dollars and here's a refurbished ipad that you can have but you can never tell anyone about this it's like no but what if i don't want to okay goodbye and kind of kicks her out the building so but the deep following them after she ended up getting Ariola, flushing her down the toilet, and um, going into the sewers and saving her. And it's like, oh, 
You can do this, Sky. The power's been inside of you the entire time, but not really. Only ever since you injected yourself with the, uh, the Compound V. And it turns out her superpower is uh, controlling shit, which is also interesting. Once again, like the Deep being the guy that he is. Like, oh, I'm the one that, uh, you know, controls fish. Once again, he's supposed to be like the very, like, but at a joke, very much like Aquaman typically ends up being. Uh, I also love the deep moment where uh, he was interrogating the drug dealer, and he's like, okay, uh, do whatever you want. And the guy was like, oh, thank you. He's like, I wasn't talking to you. And the shark attacks, and I love that it cuts away and fades to black. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. And then it hard cuts back to the shark chomping on the guy, leaving nothing but his handcuffed hands. I was like, I love that... Uh, subversion of, uh, subverting expectation there, because you expect, it's like, oh, it's this show, like, of course it's gonna lean to, it's like, oh, you cut away, it's like, okay, and then you hard cut back to be like, no, 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 of course we're gonna show you this bloody situation, it's like, yeah, it's actually kind of the only bloody situation in this episode, I mean, overall, this is kind of a non-depressing episode, I mean, not non-depressing, but more like, it's the only episode that's kind of like, aside from the first episode, I mean, that first episode had a lot of death and destruction in it, but this had one death in it, that was pretty bloody, and then also, um, Another shark-related one, too. I just thought about that, because, like, yeah, episode two, where a kingdom turned into a shark. I just thought about that. But, um, yeah, I mean, this was the most, um... I mean, everything's kind of okay. She awakened her power. She can make little shit, uh, creatures. And I love one threw something at, uh, the deep and gave him pink eye. He was just kind of like, yep, I'm done with this shit. And just kind of bounced. So it's like, I guess they're just not going to come after her. And the deep's probably going to be like, eh, doesn't matter. It's not worth it. I'll find another means to get um, back into the seven. This isn't worth it dealing with this literal shit. So, but, uh, you know, you kind of felt better for Sky because she'd even said when that person was like, oh, you could go back to your life and everything. It's like, oh, my life wasn't that great to begin with. But it was like, oh, no, get out of here anyway. Um, Vought just quickly sweeping stuff under the rug, but I'm wondering what they would have learned from Areola, what they would have done with that research and stuff. It's like, I guess, like, every bit of research helps, but I just thought, it just kind of, I think, legitimately just kind of, like, a cute, like, one that's, once again, like, every, every, like, anime stylized episode, and now she's got a whole bunch of poopy friends, you know, so it's like, oh, that's neat. It's kind of, it's like, once again, it's kind of everything ends, ends on, like, a much happier note. You're like, oh, that's, that's nice. That's sweet. You, you finally have real friends um, it's, um, uh, it's about the friends you made along the way type of thing, and not just the shitty people who use you just to buy weed and peer pressure you into doing stuff that you don't want to do, like, oh, smoke, and it's like, oh, you're gonna smoke this, so, oh, you're gonna buy it for us, too, and such, so, you yeah, know, like, like I said, cute, interesting little episode. But yeah, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good Bye.